Welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael with the Sharpening Academy. Today we're sharpening a Wustoff knife using the WorkSharp Cannon Onion blade grinder attachment. And so a lot of Wustoff knives will come in looking like this. It's not anything against Wustoff. They've actually been making amazing quality knives since 1814 out of Germany, leading sales in the West. And so we're gonna be cleaning this edge up today. It does not cut through cleanly, as you can see here. Not a clean cut. If you want access to my knife angle wiki, I'll pin it in the description for you guys. You can find almost every knife angle on that. This is a 14 degree angle knife. Tons of chips throughout of it. This needs some work. If you're brand new to the channel, nice to meet you. My name is Michael. Been sharpening for two years now. And the Work Sharp Cannon Onion is hands down my favorite sharpener to use. In this video you'll see why. Now this is somewhat of a long form video so I'm going to be narrating and talking throughout all of it just so anyone who's new can understand what I'm doing to the blade. So uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm doing heavy passes at the factory profile, which is 14 degrees, on one side, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to clean up the edge, and typically when you get a knife in that is beat up like this, um, you won't be able to see all of what is going on with the blade, because there's all those chips, little nicks, and I want to see how deep those really are. So what I'm doing is I'm getting one side back to normal, and I can, now I can see how deep those chips are. Now what I'm going to do is flip it over to the other side and pretty much do the same thing. That's going to allow me to see overall what the chips look like. I'm using a 120 grit for this process because it is so chipped. Now for any other knife, you could use, you know, like normal sharpening. You would maybe use a 400 and progress upwards. 400, 600, and then strop is ideal. But for this, since there's so many chips, we need to take a lot of material off. Now you can see... When you're dealing with something that has very big dents in it, like this, you want to increase the angle. So right now we're at 14, we're going to go to like 20. So I didn't actually set the machine to 20. What I'm doing is I'm raising it myself. And you'll notice most sharpeners will do this even if you're freehanding it. Uh, you'll increase your angle to remove more material. So that's what I'm doing right here. I increase the angle and now we're removing more material and you can actually see a very thick burr starting to form. What we want to do is remove equal material along the entire edge. I could sit here and focus on one spot, get those pieces out, but then we're going to have a very lopsided blade. It is coming on along nicely. We have a nice burr being established. Still removing a lot of material away. We want to be able to access those deep, deep chips. However, we don't want to change the shape of the blade. If you're starting to learn anything in this video, please be sure to like this video. It lets me know that you're actually watching this content. So, uh, let's check out this knife. Okay, so now, most of it is a burr. However, there's still pretty big dips. So, let's do this. We're going to turn this down a little bit. Okay. 
by turning that down, that's going to allow me to still remove material and not remove it so aggressively that I'm going to go past these chips. And what I'm trying to really focus on is by keeping the same edge um, and same blade shape. I don't want to change the shape of the blade and focus on one spot too heavily. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to start removing this burr. So I'm making sure it's nice and established. You can see it's really thick. And these gaps in the burr are basically where those cuts are. So that's what I want to access. You can see them showing right there. And there's a couple of others. And now you're about to see this burr start to flake off once I switch to the other side. The reason for that is because I'm hitting it at a somewhat steep angle. Again, we're trying to remove equal material away. It's back essentially at that 20 degree angle. Keep in mind this is a 14 degree factory. You can see all that burr flying off. It's pretty good, right? No, it's done. So we can see here, we have somewhat of a burr still on here. It started flaking off on that last pass. And I switched it to a worn 240 grit belt. That's going to allow me to still remove material because I'm not all the way at those chips just yet. But you're gonna see this burr just flake right off. It's exactly what we want. You'll notice me spending a little bit of extra time over on those chip areas. Now further in the video it's going to come and uh, actually bite me in the butt. I should have just stayed doing what I was doing. But look at that edge. I mean that's nearly Tormek level. Using it somewhat freehand on this bell system. Now you can see there's this burr starting to form again, and that's my whole goal. Again, I'm at a 240 grit. I'm not really at a grit where um, I'm going to be doing any type of polishing. This is just material removal and trying to keep the original shape of the knife. Now you can see me over here focusing on some of these spots where the chips are. You don't want to focus too long. Further in the video, like I said I'll touch more on that. You can see a drastic difference from when we first started. So now we got most of those chips out but there's a few still on the blade edge so now that we know what we're looking like, we're going to go through and clean those up a little bit more. So to clean those up more, I switched it back to the 120 grit. Reason being is now that I know how deep those chips are and what the edge looks like, now I'm going to start working it again evenly. However, when I said not to focus too long on those spots, that's what I actually did wrong. And so you can see here me going through and I'm trying to be even. However, I just couldn't help myself and I wanted to grind those spots away. So even though this blade edge is looking really good, nice and smooth all the way down, um, I'm actually changing the shape of the blade. And I'll show you when I actually notice that. You can see right here, here's a great example. I stayed way too long on it, and that actually changed the entire shape of the blade. Whenever you're doing this, you just want to wear that edge down evenly across the entire edge. I switched it back to the 400 grit, and I'm going to start removing this burr. So again with the high angle, it's going to allow me to develop that really good burr. And it's also going to allow me to see 
still how far away I am from those chips. Me again, working those spots. So my camera died. So right now this is the wide angle on my phone. I'll be switching to the HD here in just a moment. Now, I was over here doing the burr removal. Basically where I left off from that last pass. So y'all didn't miss out on anything. And as I'm starting to do these passes, you'll start to notice just how rough and non-even that edge is starting to look because I went a little too heavy on those spots. Now keep in mind this is the before, so we've definitely came a long way. But as I'm coming through, um, you'll be able to notice it right here. It looks a little bit squiggly going down the belt. Now, I didn't notice this when I was sharpening it. As you can see here, I am switching to my polishing belt and I'm actually going to go ahead and polish this. Now whenever you're polishing, you always want to polish on a low speed. You'll be generating a lot of heat with these finer grit belts. The finer you go. I just want to point out, look how beautiful it is. Sharpening on a nice rainy day. Love it. Pretty simple deburring process. Give you a quick summary. I go heavier and then I go very light. If you want a video about how to deburr or on how I deburr, please comment and let me know. This is where I was starting to notice that it has this belly and overall just a weird shape. <laughs> And uh, in my head was starting to beat myself up that I hadn't noticed it sooner. So you can see me testing it and I'm like, hey, wait a minute, this just is not right. But since I did sharpen it, I did want to do some knife tests or some paper tests. So, test her out. like butter. I mean, every knife that I do on this system just comes out like this. I mean, I love the system. Again, my hands down, my favorite system. But we have to fix this. Okay, so this is the blade all cleaned up. Let's look at it up close. You can see that edge is literally a mirror polish. Let's look at it on this side. Now, the thing about it that I don't like is put it up against a piece of paper. Actually, this you can just see it against plain background is a. Uh, Look at the, right here. It's smooth, 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 smooth. Uh. Too high right here. Smooth, 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 smooth. Uh. Too high right here. So we're gonna grind this down. Even though this is already nice and polished, we still have 20 minutes till she'll be here. But just to show you, real quick. Anyways, let's go ahead and fix this for her.
So, one more paper test. Good measure. So, somewhat of a little journey there, but I think we made it. I think we've got a nice edge on both sides, and it is nice and polished and even. I was worried about those high spots and low spots, but it looks like I was able to get those nice and taken care of for her. What do you guys think? This is the before. Lots of chips in it. And this is again the after. Another blade all sharpened up. Thank you all for watching.